In the near future, biochemical weapons cause a disaster that makes the air unbreathable. During interviews, the president of the USA assures everyone that the priority is his citizens, yet the reporters keep mentioning some rumors about secret bunkers where they'll hide scientists. Eventually most of humanity is wiped out by this tragedy, and the most important and intelligent scientists of the country are put in cryogenic sleep in underground bunkers to wait until the air is no longer toxic. There are dozens of these bunkers, and they're maintained by two engineers that wake up for two hours every six months. In this particular facility, the engineers are Bauer and Cartwright, and it's always Bauer who wakes up first. He feels a bit nauseous, but he recovers quickly, unlike Cartwright who always wakes up with nightmares because of his claustrophobia. Bauer teases him for a while before finally letting him come out of his tank, which is a different model from the others. Afterward both men begin their maintenance tasks, which include logging in at the computer to let the other facilities there alive. Cartwright is glad to see the other bunkers are doing well too, even if communication among facilities isn't possible. They also check the air on the surface, but unfortunately it's still toxic. Their room has a board with pictures of their old life and Bauer likes to put tape with the word dead on their friends' faces to remind themselves of the reality out there, but Cartwright hates it and removes the tape every time. The engineers continue to check the information on the computers and Cartwright begins to worry when he sees there has been seismic activity because of the potential damage it may have caused. Bauer is creeped out by the sleepers, so they agree Cartwright will check on them. While Bauer goes into a corridor to do repairs, Cartwright takes the chance to look at a picture he's hidden behind the board, only to suddenly turn around when he hears Abby. This is a hallucination Cartwright has about the woman he loves, and he doesn't mind chatting with her when he's alone. After putting the picture in his pocket, Cartwright goes to check on the sleepers, and it's revealed Abby is one of the scientists there. Her hallucination appears next to her tank while Cartwright runs the diagnosis and she insists Cartwright should tell Bauer about her, but Cartwright says he'll wait for the right time. At that moment, Bauer joins him and begins complaining about the sleepers, thinking it's a waste of resources and their lives to babysit a guy that knows some stuff about reptiles. However Cartwright truly thinks the scientists are the future of humanity, and he's calculated that they'll be sleeping for 20 more shifts. Once they're done with their duties, the duo uses their remaining minutes to watch old TV recordings, play chess, and Bauer even uses the bathroom for a date with Manuela. Abby visits Cartwright again, saying she looks forward to being together again when he falls asleep. However Cartwright is nervous because entering the tank is always hell for him, no matter how many times he's already done it, his claustrophobia always triggers. As Abby tries to comfort him, Cartwright suddenly sees flames on her body, and he realizes his tank is on fire. He rushes to call for Bauer, who comes out of the bathroom with the extinguisher. The fire is successfully put out, but sadly the sleeping pod is now destroyed, and Bauer has injured his hand in the process. To make matters worse, at that moment the two hours end, meaning the lights go out and the air supply is cut off. Using torchlights and the little air left in the room, the engineers read the manual and learn there's an emergency override, so they take the stairs to find the right chamber. The emergency air supply valve is quickly turned on, then the duo returns to the office to wait for the backup air to reach them. While they wait, they share some details about their lives, and Bauer admits he used to have a wife and three daughters, and he had to lie for the job because of the special requirements. Bauer had to watch how the government sealed him in the bunker and his family was left out to die under false promises, and Cartwright says he understands even if he doesn't have a family. At that moment the power finally comes back and the air supply is restored, causing the clock to give them two more hours. The engineers go looking for a spare pot at the storeroom but don't find any even if the manual says spares exist. Cartwright realizes this may not be the only storeroom and checks the bunker blueprint, which has a bunch of codes he doesn't understand. There's also a room named long-term storage that they usually don't cover because it's sealed off, but Cartwright bets the spares are there. The duo removes the seal and goes down a corridor they've never seen before, finding a door at the end. Behind it, there's a locker room where Cartwright finds a broken security camera, which doesn't make sense because their system isn't connected to this room. Bauer explains it's probably a leftover from the time this place was a military facility. Searching deeper inside, Cartwright sees Abby again, and she guides him to the box where he finally finds the spare pod. The engineers quickly fix Cartwright's tank, but he's still afraid of getting inside. Bauer volunteers to test it first and as soon as he lies down, he notices there must be a leak and the air is getting thinner in there. Cartwright goes to check the pump and suddenly, the chamber sucks Bauer down, suffocating him until he doesn't struggle in panic anymore. When Bauer is about to die, Cartwright finally shows up and cuts the pod to free him. Thinking Cartwright tried to kill him, Bauer furiously pushes him away, but Cartwright explains he was delayed because he couldn't find a knife to break the pot open. Cartwright also reminds him that it should have been him, which convinces Bauer it had been an accident. Since Cartwright's pot is destroyed now, Bauer decides they must kill one of the sleepers to use their tank instead. Cartwright reminds him their duty is to take care of the sleepers, but Bauer changes his mind by pointing out nobody can do the caring if they're dead. While Cartwright prepares a morphine injection for the euthanization, Abby shows up and asks him not to do it, she also says it's as simple as ABC. Getting an idea, Cartwright announces he can't commit murder, and Bauer immediately begins arguing about this, 
saying this is about survival. Then Bauer begins hitting him, but Cartwright pushes him away and threatens him with an injection as he asks his friend to give his idea a chance. Feeling defeated, Bauer accepts. The duo returns to the office and thanks to Abby's clue, Cartwright realizes that the weird codes on the blueprint are the same ones on the computer, meaning each code represents another bunker facility that may have more spare parts. Bauer thinks it's too dangerous since they can't know if there are air leaks between facilities but Cartwright is willing to take the risk. Then Cartwright puts on a hazmat suit that will provide clean air and a radio that will keep him in contact with Bauer, who will guide him by following him on the security cameras. When he enters the first corridor, he's shocked to discover a skeleton on the ground, whose clothes and gun said it used to be a soldier. With only half an hour left, Bauer begins fixing some old monitors in the office while Cartwright goes further inside the dark tunnels, where he finds lots of floating blue dust from the airborne contaminant. After walking for a while, Cartwright finally appears on the old security cameras, so Bauer begins labeling the fixed monitors properly. Eventually Cartwright finds a door with a sign that confirms this is the ABC facility. After struggling with the jammed lock, Cartwright comes inside and is shocked to discover nothing here is working. Since he can't open the next door, Cartwright begins to feel hopeless, and Abby appears to ask him not to give up. At that moment Bauer comes up with a solution, Cartwright can enter the ABC facility by crawling through the air duct. The claustrophobia immediately kicks in, but Cartwright swallows it down for the sake of his survival. As he moves through the duct, he's disgusted to see there are numerous bodies here too and he has to crawl over them. When Cartwright goes deeper into the duct, Bauer loses contact with him, so he decides to use some tools to boost the signal. However when he grabs his toolbox, he discovers his knife has been there all along and Cartwright possibly lied. Just to be sure, he checks the security footage and is devastated to discover that Cartwright just stood next to the tank doing nothing while he suffocated. Meanwhile Cartwright finally makes it to the ABC facility and his radio begins working again. As he looks around, he discovers the facility is in complete ruins and there are no survivors. There's also a hole in the ceiling that Cartwright uses to look outside, only to discover the planet has been demolished by nuclear weapons a long time ago. Next he checks on the sleeper's chambers, but they've also been destroyed. Cartwright gets upset when he finally realizes that the computer showing that all the facilities were well had been a lie to keep the engineers sanity and make them believe they aren't alone. Bauer comments they can't trust anyone anymore and puts the dead tape on the board again. While Cartwright continues to explore, he comes to the conclusion his facility is the only one functioning, meaning they are alone. Abby shows up to tell him he isn't alone, but at that moment Cartwright realizes he's running low on air and begins running back to his own facility. Once he reaches the last corridor, Cartwright goes through the decontamination process while Bauer shows up on the other side of the door holding up his knife, pointing out his friend's lie. Cartwright swears he can explain, but suddenly Bauer reveals he took the gun from the dead soldier and says Cartwright is a danger to him and the sleepers, meaning he has to die. Desperate and afraid, Cartwright runs back into the ABC facility, but the air is running out and he has trouble running. Abby shows up and tells him to get back into the air duct because there's an alternate path he can take. As Cartwright crawls his way through, Bauer berates him through the radio, telling him how much the betrayal hurt and that he'll die soon if he doesn't come back. Cartwright just ignores him and keeps on moving until he finds a path that takes him back to his own facility, where he quickly removes his suit to breathe properly again. Then he tries to return to the office, only to suddenly be found by Bauer, who opens fire. Luckily the shot doesn't land in the darkness, and Cartwright runs back to hide behind the door. Bauer continues to follow him, ignoring Cartwright's pleas and reminders that they're the last survivors because he's afraid that Cartwright will kill him in his sleep. Using his radio, Bauer makes noise to find Cartwright through his own communicator, but when he follows the echo he discovers Cartwright left his flashlight and his radio behind to trick him. Meanwhile Cartwright locks the door behind him and goes to the infirmary to get some morphine. He isn't sure if he should kill a dear friend, but Abby convinces him to do it or Bauer will kill him first and they'll lose their future together. After getting the injection ready, Cartwright comes out and discovers Bauer has managed to open the door and get inside. He tries to sneak around carefully, but a shot to his shoulder takes him by surprise. Bauer comes closer as he suffers for having to kill a man he considered family, and Cartwright tries to explain he did it to protect his lover as he hands Bauer his secret picture. Then he starts talking to Abby, which angers Bauer because it sounds like madness. Cartwright uses this distraction to jump on Bauer and make him drop the gun, then he fails to hit him and runs away into the sleeper chamber. Bauer recovers his gun and finds the picture on the floor, and something on it looks familiar. He rushes to see the sleepers and confirms that Cartwright has been lying more than he thought. It turns out Abby is Cartwright's wife, and that's the only reason why he cares so much about taking care of the sleepers. Furious, Bauer threatens with killing Abby to make his friend come out, but Cartwright surprises him from behind by injecting morphine on his shoulder. Bauer tries to respond by shooting Cartwright, but the morphine kicks in and he falls to the floor in pain. Cartwright intends to help him, but Bauer reminds him there isn't much time left so Cartwright should go to sleep to keep taking care of his girl. Cartwright goes back to the office and uses Bauer's chamber to go to sleep right before the clock reaches zero. Before losing consciousness, Cartwright sees an illusion of Bauer playing with the chess set. 
Many years later, the sleepers finally wake up from their cryosleep and begin looking around to see the current state of the world. Abby searches for Cartwright and discovers he's now an old man, but she hugs him anyway. Make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you can watch more videos like this. Thanks for watching.